Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program! There's Duna way in the distance, and hey, good news! Uh, my interface seems to be working again. So, that's wonderful. So what we were going to do last time, if I remember correctly, we were going to burn a little retrograde, such that we actually encounter Kerbin, or Earth over here, as opposed to just barely missing it. So I'm going to go ahead and burn just a scooch. There you go, you can see our separation is improving, improving, improving. I guess I could burn a little faster. There it is, okay. Now that we've done that, where is, Kerbin is over here. So if I focus my view on it and zoom in, we'll actually see what that's going to look like. So in theory here, since burning retro was getting me closer to Kerbin, if I burn more retro, I will keep getting closer and closer and closer. There's the moon as well. We're hoping to dodge that. On the other side, we'll encounter it. Okay, we won't encounter it here. So, ultimately, it would be really nice. As long as we hit within 30,000 or so meters, we'll be getting, like, full air breakage, won't we? I mean, we've got plenty of Delta V left in the tank. We might be able to do a deorbit from here, but... Why do that? Now, one of my questions is, if I start to burn normal now, is that the ideal spot? Can I? Is there an ascending and descending node on my view? I think there is. Perry, should I not be able to see my ascending and descending node? Apo Perry. Maybe not. Oh well. Fair enough. Let's try to do a little bit of a normal burn. I love, like, we're so far away that even just rotating our ship changes some of our stats here. Oh, I guess we went the other way. Or not. Maybe it doesn't make a difference at this point. Wrong place in the orbit, I suppose. Um, let's just burn a little bit more retrograde. Get it a little closer to Earth one way or another. Kerbin. That's about as close as we can get there. There might be able to be some, like, radial, anti-radial stuff, but I think the optimal place for us to actually do... Oops, still want to be in map view. Um, and focus on myself. Oh, there it is. There's the descending node. Okay, I, there wasn't a little sign for it. Maybe I was looking at the wrong orbit, too. There wasn't a little sign for it. But let's go ahead and warp to here. So that's the descending node, so we will want to be burning um, normal once we get there. I may complete this turn, because it's going to wackify my orbit. Just while the turn is happening, then it gets back to sort of normal here. Um, I don't I don't trust it. I'm just going to fast forward. I don't know, maybe it's fine. Because sometimes I find it skips by. And you can see here, like, I can click... Cannot auto-warp, and I can't click on a warp to here for some reason. So yeah, I'm just going to fast forward. And let things go. Sometimes I find that it doesn't let me set maneuver nodes the way that I might want it to. And I'm not sure why that is. But presumably this becomes the, the optimal spot for me to do my normal burn, so that I'm not coming in the bottom of Kerbin so much. I mean, it doesn't... It doesn't necessarily matter, like I don't have to get into an equatorial orbit, but I think it will make the entire approach a lot better. In fact, it probably would have made it a lot easier to guarantee that approach. And then in a few days, I'm going to have to go and do a little bit of a burn maneuver for my other ships to make sure they encounter Duna properly. Okay, at this point, we are close enough. Click here. Nope. Click on Kerbin. Nope. Really? I want to focus on Kerbin, please and thank you. Oops. I had it for a second. Focus view. When I mean, there's too much stuff. Alright, so this is where we're going to encounter things. So now... Wow, things have shifted a little bit. Let me start with a bit of normal burn and see what happens. Okay, yeah, but it's going the wrong way around. What if I... Nope. Woo! Alright, yeah, I went I went a little quick there. Not gonna lie. Uh, let's burn normal at this point. That's going to be okay. We'll fix that, and then we'll burn prograde. There we go. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. It's hardly using any Delta V because I still have my D-rated engine and I'm only using a shift. 
there. I think this is just going to be a lot easier to have everything work out. So now, um, I don't remember. A little retrograde? One or the other. Nope. It is the prograde. Okay. Radial anti radio will probably do a fair amount of uh, work there for us, too. Um, turn prograde. Okay, again, you stopped responding for no reason. You have plenty of power. There we go. Just jiggled my mouse and or hit one of the keys. Now all of a sudden this worked. Oh, that happened so fast. That happened so fast. Um. Whoa! I hit X, you bastard! Don't you lie to me! I hit X. Maybe I just hit it too fast. And again, it's not. There we go. It's not actually doing the move. Something is weird. Okay, we're going to call that close enough, because apparently I can't possibly get in that close. Because right now, again, I'm running my engine at how low? Nine point, I guess I could bring it down. Like, you can't, can you actually type? No, that'd be nice, because I'd like to type in one. So 5.5 .5 seems to be the smallest I can get it. And I could do the thing where you hold control and then tap shift once. That might end up being faster. Again, jiggle around. But I was going to say, it's so far out, I can just wait until I'm in the sphere of influence of Kerbin. It'll take a little bit more delta V to make a change, but it'll be way more controllable. Also, so we can see how, like, the tiniest little bit of noise here, just even rotating, can dramatically alter our orbit. So I'm going to leave it there with the idea, of course, that we will be doing an adjustment. Um, I'm just going to set an alarm for when we get our sphere of influence change. One minute warning, that's going to be fine. Okay. This should be okay. We should be able to use a decent amount of air braking um, as we get uh, close in there. That's basically going to be our entire plan. Yeah. All right. Fast forward so we can do the um, my uh, my two ships that are heading to Duna. It's like it's the same transfer window no matter what way you go, as far as I can tell. So I have some little maneuvers planned for both of them. Room. It's interesting to see things change. Uh, if I go and focus on here, it might be even more interesting. Max speed. All right, and that'll automatically get brought down. Kerbal alarm clock is absolutely required if you're running multiple missions simultaneously because it's so easy to forget something and then miss a maneuver that you have to do. So I plan these maneuvers between the two episodes here, and they're, they're minuscule little adjustment burns just because right now... Um, jump ship and restore maneuver load. Oh, yeah. Um, right now... They do not encounter Duna, exactly. So, if we zoom out and look... Oh, actually, you are encountering Duna, even as is. Or, unless that's showing the preview. That might be what that is. Let's go ahead and lock ourselves to the maneuver node. The ship turns very slowly. I think it's only got like a tiny little reaction wheel under the Stiputnik, and that's it. So its ability to uh, to turn is pretty pretty limited. Uh, let's go ahead as well and derate the engine, because this is a tiny little move. Five percent, and on a poodle, like a poodle is nothing to start off with. Okay, so we're not quite at the node yet, but it's going to be fine. The distance here doesn't matter. The delta v is what matters to get exactly right. So let's go to full. Oh my god, this is at full power. Poodles have no teeth or something. So I guess I could have burned... Um, I, I didn't have to derate my engine quite so much, probably, to make this maneuver with the poodle. But that's okay. I could even get in a little bit of physics warp if I was concerned. I suppose I can bring it up some. Alright, and then go to shift. It's still going to be super slow. Super slow. Love it. And... Bang. Sweet. So, oh. How come we had two maneuvers planned? Uh-oh. Alright, we are getting into counter with Duna. So, I had a double up on maneuvers. Oh, the whole restore maneuver thing. I bet you, because I haven't, like, reloaded the game, I bet you it still has the maneuver saved. So now, okay, what I can do is fast forward, do a refueler. The nine hour or nine days apart for these two maneuvers, which is pretty good considering the whole journey is taking hundreds of days. But they did launch like they didn't launch in parallel, but they left um, Kerbin basically in parallel. 
Okay. Oh, I didn't realize the little W. Um, I'll kill warp and messages. Ah. I was going to say, the W pulses as it's doing things. Okay, let's jump to the ship first. Confirm that it still has a maneuver, because you'll still have the option of restoring the maneuver here. Um, replace maneuver node. Okay. And delete on close. Okay, go ahead and turn yourself to the node, which you're coming up on. And again, the same thing. Okay, so it had like a, a dummy maneuver there. That's what was going on. It had some, some stupid thing still there. Okay, we are so slowly turning. I don't think I have any... I suppose I could put on RCS for this. I actually have some extra RCS tanks. Because I knew that this wouldn't be particularly maneuverable. I could put extra reaction wheels on, but it's fine. Oh, and also this is supposed to dock, so yeah, don't RCS too much. Get yourself close. I'm going to use the time warp trick here to just freeze the rotation right around there. There we go. And as soon as the engine goes, then the gimbling will be able to help as well. Um, this is a really small burn, so let's go. And... Alright, it's going to be pretty goddamn close. Yeah, the maneuver node moved. So at this point, ooh, we are not actually encountering it. So... Well, if I stay myself on prograde, which I am vaguely. Where are you going? Okay, kill rod. Hello. Maybe I have so little rotation nodes. Alright, prograde. Oh, this thing turns like a pig. It's terrible. And... Okay, you lock that on. Good. So, where's the closest approach? Oh, no, we actually encounter now. Wow. The RCS changed things enough that we're actually encountering Duna. That is freaky. Um, Duna's actually over here, so I want to focus you here. This, this is my encounter. I encounter it here and then escape. So this is not a real encounter at all, is it? So I'm going to burn a tiny prograde and see what happens. There. Whoa! Did you see it go for a second there? Alright. Retrograde? No, you're not going to do it for me? Something is not happy. Turn off the RCS. Do nothing. Alright, we are now in an encounter vector. Don't F with it. <laughs> um... Yeah. Alright, this is us. We're gonna encounter it somewhere over there. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little maneuver over here and put an alarm for the next maneuver node, even though the maneuver's not doing anything. Apparently it is. It's a null maneuver. Add maneuver that does nothing. Why would it like preload it for seventeen hundred? That makes no sense. Anyway, I'm just using that as a bookmark. Um and Right, I guess it's this one here, isn't it? There. Just make sure to wake me up when we get there. Clearly, we may have to do a little bit of fine-tuning. Wow! Um, so that is... That is the refueler. You know what I forgot to do? Is on my unmanned probe. I forgot to set a timer for anything. So it doesn't have a maneuver and should be happily intersecting Duna. And it is. Good. So just let me know when you're like 10 minutes out from the encounter. And then we'll make some adjustments at that point. Alright. Let me get back to the space center. Let me do a quick save. Do 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 do. Quick save. Well, I guess you saved automatically. So let's fast forward. That's max speed. Brum, 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 brum. I hope no one has seizures. Uh, we're going to fast forward until the Duna lander is approaching the sphere of influence change with Kerbin. And then we will try to land it and hope to God I've done everything properly. 
because I have no idea. We're coming back from Duna, and we're going to try to break using air. What could possibly go wrong? So my idea is, as we're getting close to the actual Kerbin atmosphere, I'm going to burn full retro at that point. Try to just bleed off as much speed as possible using whatever fuel I have left over. And then separate and cross my fingers. Okay. Now, since we're not going to be in a Kerbin orbit, like, if you're in any kind of orb orbit around Kerbin, and... You know, you're even clipping, you know, the first 1K, so you're at like 69K in orbit. Then eventually that will slow you down and bring you back down to Kerbin. Here, it's entirely possible, if I'm just flying by and I clip the upper part of the atmosphere, that it's not going to slow me down enough to stay within the Kerbin sphere of influence. I might still just fly by Kerbin. All right. Down and down. Cross it without any time warp. Try to keep the physics as intact as possible. Okay. Good stuff. So now our periapsis is still reporting us at 49k. And yeah, so my idea... Well, we're going to pass by moon, all these things. I'm going to burn retro at some point. Yeah, that is still completely... Non-functional. Until I like just hit a key and then it's like, oh, maybe I should turn. Maybe it gets confused because I'm going from ship to ship. Um, now I could burn a little retro like way out here, which would drop down my periapsis, and I guess that would be a thing to do because it'll happen very quickly. Let me let me bring it all the way back up, but just start with a tap of shift. Yeah, you can see the periapsis drop. And it's just more stable to do it here. It would have been more efficient from far away, but I, like, couldn't get the precision. If I drop it down to at least 30k, I'm almost 100% sure we will completely complete our re-entry. There we go. So I think that's going to be enough thickness of air to slow us down. Um, our orbital velocity relative to Kerbin is going to grow as we get closer. I'm going to go ahead and warp to there. Um, that's three days away. That's We're not going to interrupt any of our other timers, so that's okay. Um... One year. Okay, that the reason that maneuver that I set for the Duna refueler is completely wrong. It's like a year away. So something weird is happening. So um, I'll have to make sure to switch back to it and, and verify things. So we're going to dodge the moon. That's very important. Okay. Orbital velocity has climbed, but isn't that high. We are one hour to our periapsis. So... We're still facing retro, that's good. We're very, very high, so we can go ahead and fast forward some more. I didn't repack my parachutes. I forgot to repack my parachutes when I um, was docked at the station. I was supposed to EVA with an engineer and repack that. Well, hey guys, I noticed it before we died. But is there anything I can do about it now? Well, we're obviously going to have to go and burn prograde and raise our periapsis above 70. Which we have now done. That's the easy part. Being so far away and changing the periapsis is easy. The question now is, can we get ourselves into Kerbin orbit? Let me uh, warp to... 30 seconds to the periapsis is fine. Let me warp to that and burn retro with all our fuel and see if we can get into orbit and just do a rescue mission. I forgot to repack my parachutes. Derp derp derp. Okay. Time to periapsis. I'll wait a little bit longer. I don't want to drop my peri, although I'm unlikely to make a big change to the periapsis from this spot here. Still, we only have 43 seconds of burn. I'll assume I need all of it. Let's go. Come on, Apoapsis. Come on, Apoapsis. Come on. Oh, we're going to do this. Look at that. Holy crap. Hello. 
Now, my question is, does this still count as being part of the same mission? I just realized. We have a mission to return someone from orbit of Duna. But because I have had to reload and I keep switching ships, I'm actually really concerned that it's not going to register that for me. That would be really annoying. In which case, if I can't, if I don't get that mission completed, then at some point in the future, I'll be bringing home the people who are in the space station around um, Duna, and I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it off-screen as like one really long extended mission. Um, I should still be burning retro here. I should have been burning retro the whole time, uh, just to try to circularize my orbit. So we're gonna do a rescue mission. No problem. I'm happy. I'm happy that I noticed before I entered the atmosphere, and B, whoa, whoa that is close, look at that periapsis. Um, it's circular-ish, and I'm happy that I uh, recognized, yeah, I'm happy I recognized that the parachutes weren't working before I entered the atmosphere, and two, um, I'm happy that I had enough fuel to enter a nice little orbit. It didn't have to be a nice orbit, just any orbit, even if it went out past Minmus, I would be okay with. So, a rescue mission is the easiest thing in the world. I've done it about a million times. What's the timer at? Let, let's try to see if we can't squeeze it in here um, very, very quickly. So, um, are you working? Okay. Ooh, that is laggy. I guess because it had, it's having to load in all the textures over here. So, let's go to the space center. We're even in a relatively equatorial orbit. It's wonderful. Are we orbiting the right way around? That's a question. I'm happy I'm, I'm checking these things. If I just go fast forward. Yeah, you're going clockwise. You're in a reverse orbit than what I'm used to. Good thing I noticed that before we launched. Okay. Do, do, do. So launching westwards is slightly less efficient, but it's not too bad. So well, let's go and launch Rescue 1. Oh my god, game. Everything is laggy. And half broken. Uh, rescue one with no crew. You are going to go launch. So we're spending an extra $26,000. Carbon bucks to go and save, um, to go and save Jeb. Jeb's been saved a few times now. Okay, so we're going to go, uh, SAS on or kill rod. Either way, it's exactly the same. We're going to be at full throttle. We're going to launch and we're going to gravity turn the opposite way. By the way, did you notice I replaced my flags? Hey. Boom. Okay, we have cleared the tower. I've used this mission for many a Kerbal rescues. And then once we get to about 100 meters per second, or, you know, everything is going relatively well, I will start to gravity turn towards the west. I could actually take a moment here and set a target. Set as target. Um, yeah, relatively equatorial. Because ideally, we would like to make um, an inclination change during the launch, like like going west like this, but you know, there's other options. Yeah, it's almost entirely on the equator. And in fact, for some reason, we happen to be gravity turning the right way. I don't know why, but I'll take it. Maybe tipping a little aggressively here. Let me uh, bring that a little further south, please and thank you. I really don't know why the gravity is pulling me in that direction. There we go. Could have something to do with the shape of my booster setup. Okay, you are gravity turning a little too aggro, my friend. I'm going to try to keep myself pointing right here, which is actually more or less what we want to do. So that should drag our, our prograde a little bit more towards the westerly line and not tip over too quickly or aggressively. Should be alright. How come I have a, a fairing on this? Seems unnecessary, because I do have a command pod on top, but alright, whatever. Can't remember what I've decided to do with this design. I suppose I could uh, roll like that. Oh shit, that, right, that will change my interpretation of things over here. Okay, we can go ahead and bring it back down. A, whoa. Okay. Let's say a little closer to the 45 degree mark. 
I don't, I've never launched in this direction before, and it's very, very disorienting. All right, let's do that. And, yep, we can... I'm actually pretty happy with it, other than the fact that, for whatever reason, it keeps trying to push me north. All right. A little further over. We're going to be good like this. Yep, past the 45 degree mark at this point is fine. I mean, basically, we're just chasing our prograde. Because our time to apoapsis is pretty short and shrinking. Yeah, we need to delay that a bit. We need that number to grow. We do that by pitching up a bit. But not too much, because you can see it's actually, like, sort of flipping on its own. Or at least, you might not be able to see, but I can, because I know I wasn't putting in any keyboard inputs, and it was trying to roll over backwards. Alright, time to apoapsis is climbing, which is good. And the atmosphere is getting thinner, which means it's going to be more forgiving of this. But we're definitely using a lot more fuel than I might have preferred here to try to get this to work properly. Time to apo is climbing, good. Yeah, I, I, I probably should have... Um, I think it gravity turned a little aggro on me, like sort of automatically, and maybe a little sooner than I would have wanted. Interestingly enough, we're going to be basically pointing literally the wrong way to intersect the ship, which is interesting. If I had waited till it was overhead, till I could see the circle, and I could try to, like, line things up with the circle. Basically, we're just going to be on the wrong side of the planet. And that's okay. Alright, now we can definitely get down to prograde. In fact, I'll just lock to prograde, which will be more than sufficient. Time to app is still climbing, but that's, that's more likely to happen as you get closer. We can probably go ahead and bring it right down to the horizon like this, which will actually shrink the time to apple a bit, and just start to circularize our orbit a wee bit more. We do need to make sure that we don't hit the apoapsis too soon, because we want it to be above 70. And what I'll probably do is try to keep as low as an orbit here as possible so that we can catch up to the ship. Well, we know at one point the ship has it crossed the 70k mark. Almost exactly, so that's probably near where we'll do our rendezvous. All right. About ready to drop this layer here, or this uh, stage. Time to Apo is climbing relatively quickly. Keep doing this. We'll probably have to kill our fuel. Actually, it'll happen right about the right time to drop this stage. It's kind of funny. There we go. And just push it a little bit higher. We could have gotten rid of the fairings earlier, actually. Save some weight. Yeah, see, I don't know why the fairing is there at all. Okay. We're now above 70. We will simply wait. I'm actually going to physics warp. Uh, stay facing prograde. And I will physics warp until we cross the 70,000, just because the physics of these components is relatively minimal. So there's no chance, I think, that we'll shake ourselves apart. And as soon as we cross the 70,000, we can actually time warp at that point. There we go. Deploy the solar panels. Excellent. Okay. So, there's us. There's our target. Time to apo, about one minute. Our orbit are almost all the way around. We'll probably need to start 10 seconds to apo for our burn. And even then... So weird. We're going the wrong way around the planet, you guys. Okay. And... Go. Periapsis is rising. We'll see our little symbols start to rotate right around when we circularize. And there we go. Boom. Very circular, very nice. So, just out of curiosity, with our current thing, can we just get a little preview about like when our closest orbit will be? Yeah, we got nothing particularly good, so we are going to have to make some adjustments. Now, we want to make all our adjustments over here because our paths are pretty similar over here. So we're going to assume we want to meet over there, which means I want to do all my burns over there so it doesn't actually change that part of my orbit. I'm going to push out this other part of the orbit just so that the timing works out that we'll get an encounter in a slightly more reasonable time. Ideally within two orbits, because then I can actually watch the symbols. So we're going to be facing prograde. Yes, we've got lots of fuel and tank for these encounters. Excellent. We are closing in our periapsis. We want... Oh, that's the... Oh, that's that's my periapsis. So actually, I do want to burn here. So our peris are basically in the same place. Okay. Go. Um, 
Yeah, I'm worried that we're not going to get there in a reasonable time regardless. Because I could end up with a bigger orbit. But yeah, we're not seeing our little arrows change, which is kind of upsetting. Because I was hoping we'd get a nice close orbit nearby. How much fuel do I got? Okay, so I could actually go into a larger orbit and that would be okay. Maybe we're so far apart, that's probably a big part of it. Tell you what, let me wait until our next orbit and we'll do some more maneuverings at that point. I wasn't even watching. It's possible that we'll get a nice encounter over here, too. Well, now we're just going to match orbit, so this is definitely not going to help us because we're not really making a big change. So I'll actually just stretch my orbit out to be larger than the other one, which will make sense because, especially earlier, yeah, I should have done that, because it's behind us. So the shortest way to encounter is if we go slower than it does, which means having a bigger orbit. Ooh, we're getting some motion. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Gotta make sure to leave enough fuel for us to deorbit. That shouldn't be a problem. It's orbit 12, 11, 8, 9. Again, we'll see the pink things come closer together. If we get a close orbit, there we go. That's too far away. So in four orbits, nine orbits, I'm in number four. There, ten kilometers in five orbits. I'll take it. Okay. It's quite far away, which is annoying. At least every time we're far from the planet we can time warp a lot faster. Mm-hmm. There's another orbit. The signs will change a bit. Yeah, it would have been... I could have really planned the launch a lot better. I could have launched in such a way that I would start off a lot closer and it would eliminate a lot of this silliness. But hey, what the hell? on, go, 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 go. Okay. We are indeed getting pretty close. So, we'll cancel that. We're in target mode, good. We're going to be ready to burn counter to target. If we have target mode here, then our retrograde marker means that. We're going to try to sight our target. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is, down there. So our distance is closing, is closing, is closing. When it stops closing, I will basically try to match orbits. Okay, here's the thing, though. I was going to say match speeds. But that's not exactly what I want to do. What I want to do is keep us pointing in the same direction. So this is the retrograde marker. This is the direction away from our target. So right now, we're still mostly moving towards our target. And if what I can do is if I turn over here, so you push retrograde markers by burning. So if I do this, I'm partially burning retro, so I'm sort of slowing myself down relative to the target, but more importantly, I'm pushing my retrograde marker on top of the away from target marker, which means on the other side of the ball, which I'm not going to show you right this second because I still want to maneuver a bit more, it means my prograde is basically moving directly towards my target. So by doing this, instead of coming to a standstill and then burning towards my target, I'm just using the minimal amount of energy I need to keep myself moving directly towards my target. And it will slip because of orbital differences. And then we'll make a little bit of adjustment, but we're still moving towards our target, generally speaking, at a slower and slower rate. And every time I burn retro, I mean, I can burn at exactly 90 degrees over here. It's just hard to spot. This will reduce the amount by which I actually slow ourselves down, so we're still going towards it a little bit faster. There we go. There we go. Now we're very close. 
So let's actually try to. I was gonna say hit the brake. No, actually, yeah. Let's let's hit the brakes a fair bit right now, and then I'll work out the details. Good. Now kill rot. Burn in that direction. Again to push that retrograde right on top. As opposed to killing all of our motion, we'll just try to kill the motion that's not sending us towards the target. It's more efficient. Considering I suck at like the the grand sort of sweeping, meeting things in orbit in an efficient manner, at least I've got the the final approach. I got the final approach down with pretty good precision. Hell, last time I was so close that I um, smashed into my target and broke my solar panels, so that was good. Let's go ahead and kill this thrust limiter as much as possible. Let's fast forward just a wee bit. Not too much. Burn, 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 burn. Looking good. Okay, we can get a little closer. We got enough electricity? Yeah, okay. Because we're on the dark side. Get no solar panel, but that's okay. Just gonna time warp a bit. And kill that, and then kill the speed. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and stop. Kill rotation. Um, put your hatch facing up, because that makes life a lot easier, like so. Now I can switch over here. Um, you just kill rot, please and thank you. Again, the hatch facing up is good. We're going to EVA. Kick all the data. Let go. RCS mode. Oops. And down. Don't hit the solar panel, because you can rip it off during an EVA. Oop, up, 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 up. Grab. Board. 33 experiments on board. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go back into orbital mode. Orbital mode over here. Actually, go ahead and just knock me away from the, the lander for now. And we're going to burn retrograde and land. This will go faster if our engine actually functions. And we are currently on a re-entry trajectory. We may as well burn off as much as we possibly can. Make us re-enter a little bit faster. I suppose I could just, like, point my ship down and burn in that direction. That'd be a novel idea. That would be what, uh, anti-radial? Yeah, let's burn straight towards the planet. That actually doesn't do anything the way we want it to. But it's funny to consider. Mm-hmm. Burning off the rest of my fuel. Not that we need to do it, but what the hell are we going to use it for? Nothing. That's what. Uh, let's fix our staging over here. Like so. Alright. No need to maintain that, just to make sure we've got enough electricity to do any further final maneuvers. Uh, one more. Excellent! Time warp. Time's 50, it'll stop as soon as we enter the atmosphere. There it goes, now we can physics warp. Make sure we're just vaguely retrograde. It'll help just make sure we stabilize a little sooner. Coming in from orbit, when will burn effects hit? Around 30 exactly? Ooh, a little bit before that, actually. I'll stop the time warp just for this. Although, really, the physics warp, I've never had a problem with this. I'm a little bit more cavalier when I'm on my own. I'm like, yeah, we can fast forward through all the flame effects, right? It's fine. Coming home with 33 science. I have no idea if that's going to count as completing our quest, though, which is the only downside. Covered, destroyed. Okay, let's warp to a little closer to the ground in the interest of time. Deploy the chute. And physics warp some more. At 500, it'll fully deploy. And now we'll go down nice and slow. And again, I'll try to kill the physics warp just before we land. 
make sure nothing terrible happens. Although again, I'm pretty sure it's been totally fine in the past. So I should be here with, uh, what, 33 science experiments. Recover vessel. Curious to know if that'll complete my quest of bringing home someone from Duna orbit or if it sort of broke the, the sync of the missions. Especially since we actually had to reload in the middle. Not just switch ships, but actually reload the game. Did I just get 3,100 science? I mean, that did represent, what, three trips down to Mars? The first one, where we stranded Jebediah. The second one, where we rescued him. And the third bonus one, that left us without any parachutes. That is a lot of science. In fact, I don't know if we need any more science for the rest of the game. Recovered some stuff, did that, and no, it did not complete my, my mission of returning someone from Duna orbit. Damn, that is so annoying. So I gotta do it in one go, without a crash. Plant a flag on Duna. Another mission for this? I don't have a, a vessel that can do that right now. I suppose I should take it anyway. <clears throat> maybe when I go and send my ship over that's going to collect everyone from Duna, and maybe finally complete that one, um, that run mission to return to Corbin from the orbit of Duna. Um, I'll try to do it with a ship that lands on Duna first or something like that. We'll see how it goes. May as well have it. Anyway, that is, um, that is a lot of science. Can we unlock all the things? Well, let's get very heavy rocketry for the big rhinos and stuff, which also need the giant fuel tanks. High performance fuel system, what is this? Just another bigger tank for that. Okay, what is this? Experimental science, large holding tank, raw materials, narrow band scanner, Oh, it's another part of the ScanSat mod. Land removal orbit. Moon is spot directly below the Or is it a, it's a resource scanner? Max altitude, 500k. Hmm, alright. I don't know. Let's get the ion engines. Let's get advanced unmanned tech. Ah, Mech Jeb will now be able to handle rendezvous undocking. Interesting. Now, docking I feel I've mostly mastered. I might still do more manual rendezvous to like until I can reliably get the long distance bit. That's mostly a launch question, I'd say. Automation, the Mech Jeb pod for the top, which has like a permanent electrical generator, its own engine. Oh, this is like an all-in-one. Interesting. And what else does it give me? Oh, the Mark II drone core. Hang on a sec. Let's get specialized electronics, a bigger battery pack, the fuel cell array. And, well, actually, I don't have enough money for absolutely everything, or enough science for absolutely everything. Oh, I want these uh, multi-point connectors for building cool space stations. All right, let's get the composites for now. And then I can't afford that. Oh, I can't afford it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want these quad adapters and all that stuff. Well, we're going to need to keep sciencing. Now, so much time has spent, actually, that I probably have another 500 science sitting around Duna. Let's see here. The mace. Um, fly. Should have quick saved first. Work? Yes? Everything is awesome? Everything is awesome? Good. Save. Um, I bet you have full science, and you do. Why don't you transmit all that science? And yeah, you still have some science left, because for some reason, uh, last time I did it, I couldn't grab like all the science, or I couldn't fit it all into a capsule for some reason. So, we're ha I mean, we have to come back and get that stuff anyway, but... That's going to be another 500 units of science waiting for us at home as soon as it's done uploading. And not only that, but if I review... Yeah, not enough electric charge. Let's just fast forward through this. It doesn't help that we uh, broke one of the solar panels, of course. Fast forward around here. That is a lot of data to transmit. And then we're going to go into the dark side, so then we won't have... Oh, we've got all electric charge now. Right, if you time warp faster, it doesn't process the things at the same amount of ticks. Okay, so not only that, we can review data. 499 science gain. So we keep this. Oh, this isn't worth anything, because it's a duplicate. Okay, we'll discard that one. There we go. And this is mostly a duplicate as well, but I can pro I can produce another 200. Ooh, it won't fit, so I don't think it'll take it at all. Yeah. I can trash this thing, because we don't need it. I guess I'll technically keep that. I can trash that one. So yeah, there's a bunch of duplication here. Okay, and now, if I review, this one is still in there, so as soon as we 
we burn a little bit more data. We'll come back to it in a couple of months. The data count will have gone down. We'll have a lot more science to send home as well. And then we'll process the rest of this materials lab. Um, so for now, keep it, keep it, keep it. All right. So another quick save. Go back to the space center. Make sure everything is groovy. And we'll cut this episode. Uh, what do we do next time? Well, I need to remember to do any sort of fine-tuning for my new modules that are being sent to Duna. Um, oh, what we'll probably do is land that little, um, my little rover uh, core on Duna. It can transmit some more, some more science from there. We're not going to get as much bang for our buck as if we actually brought it home, but it'll do okay. Um, unless I want to send another manned mission, actually, to Duna. Well, I mean, I've got a rover there regardless, so I'll put the rover at the polarized cap, and then I'll figure out where I want to land with my other dude. Uh, so that'll be next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye-bye.